What's up everyone? Welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Today is going to be my 20 minute Google Ads tutorial. So I recently created a full Google Ads tutorial for 2020. So you can find that video here. If you're looking for something with more detail, this is an hour and six minutes. Today's tutorial is going to be much shorter. I'm going to go through everything a lot quicker. So if you're looking to get started with Google Ads, this is going to be a great way to get started creating your first campaign. So you want to get started by going to ads.google.com. And if you don't have a Google account already, then what you're going to have to do is click on start now and create your first Google account. If you already have a Google account, which I'm assuming you do if you're watching this on YouTube, then what you can do is just click on sign in, sign into your Google account, and you're going to eventually open a page that looks something like this in Google ads. So my account is completely set up. So when you do first get started, you're going to have to make sure you set up your billing method. Otherwise, you're going to get an error message at the top to set up your billing method in order to start your first campaign. So in order to do that, what you're going to do is come up over here to tools and settings and under billing, you're going to see billing summary, billing documents, billing settings. You can set up everything there. So once you set up your billing, the next thing you want to do is import conversions from your website. So what I prefer to do is come here to linked accounts under setup. And under linked accounts, you're going to see one of the options is Google Analytics. So we can click on details here and you want to make sure you link your Google Analytics account to your Google Ads account. So the example I'm going to be showing today is going to be for my website, farmhousegoals.com. And specifically, I'm going to show you how I would target some different keywords related to farmhouse betting. So what we're going to be doing is you want to first link your Google Analytics account here. So that's going to enable auto tagging. It's going to allow you to actually track your campaigns directly into Google Analytics. And then you can see here there's goals here. So when you create goals as your conversions in Google Analytics, you can import them directly into Google Ads. So if you come over here to tools and settings and under measurement conversions, what you can do is click on the plus sign over here and select the kind of conversions you want to track. You can do website, app, phone calls, or import. If you come over here to import, this is where you can import any of the goals that you've created in Google Analytics. So if you click here and click on continue, it's going to allow you to import goals that you haven't imported from your account yet. So you can see right here, I've imported five goals from Google Analytics. I've imported zero transactions from Google Analytics. So if you're using a Shopify website or big commerce or any of these types of e-commerce website providers, you can import your transaction data directly from Google Analytics into your Google ads account and use that as your conversion tracking. So if you want a little bit more detail about this, I would recommend checking out my other tutorial. I also have tutorials on my channel about Google ads conversion tracking. I will link any of the other videos that I think are relevant to this video directly in the description so you can learn about keyword match types, conversion tracking, bid strategies. So if you want more detail about any of those topics, I'll link all of that directly in this video description. So once you have your conversion actions and you have them imported, you're going to see conversion actions here. One of the main things you want to do is for your conversion actions, include them in your conversions. That means that any conversions that you drive for your Google ads campaigns will be included in the conversions column as you're running campaigns. So you can see over here, there's some different conversion data, all conversions, total conversion value. So you can track different conversions. You can track conversion value, which is really useful for e-commerce or if you're selling something with a fixed price. So if you're selling a $50 product, then every conversion can be worth $50 for your business. And then you have an idea of how much revenue you're driving based on the budget that you're spending. So what we can do is once we have our conversion tracking all set up, we'll come back over here and we can get started with building our campaign. So in order to build our campaign, we're going to start right here in the campaign screen and we're going to click on this plus sign, this blue plus sign and click on new campaign. Okay. So it's going to say, select the goal that would make this campaign successful to you. So generally what you want to do is import your conversions first or create your conversion actions in your Google ads account. And then you either want to optimize for sales or leads when you're creating a search campaign or any type of Google ads campaign. So what I'm going to be doing is coming back over here to the conversion actions real quick. And the conversion action that I'm going to be optimizing for, for this campaign is outbound click. You're going to see it's recording conversions here. So you want to make sure you're getting this recording conversions because then you know that you have good conversion tracking data from your Google Analytics account to your Google Ads account, and you're able to track all of those conversions directly back to your Google Ads campaigns. So if we click on outbound clicks here, you're going to see there's a bunch of settings for this conversion. If we click on edit settings, so the category for this conversion is outbound click. So this is a lead category. There's other sales categories at the top here, purchase, add to cart, begin checkout, subscribe, leads category. So we have submit lead form, book appointment, sign up, request quote, get directions and outbound click. 
So I'm choosing outbound click here, clicking on save. That is a lead category. So if we come over here and we're creating our new campaign, the goal that is success would make this campaign successful to me is leads. So we're gonna click on leads. We're gonna choose the search campaign type and we're gonna select the ways we'd like to reach our goal. And for us, it's gonna be website visits and we can enter our website here. So we'll do farmhousegoals.com and we'll click on continue. So now we can get started with building our campaign and hopefully driving conversions for our campaign. So getting started in here, type is gonna be search, goal is gonna be leads. You wanna name your campaign. For this one, I'm just gonna leave the name that they gave me, it's lead search 21. You just wanna make sure you understand what your campaign is trying to do. So next is gonna be networks. So when you're creating a search network campaign, you do not wanna include the Google Display Network for the Google Display Network. And then we wanna keep all of our search ads on the search network and we wanna include Google Search Partners. So the only thing you want checked here is include Google Search Partners. You wanna exclude the Google Display Network for your search network campaigns. So we can click on show more settings here. You can set start and end dates. There's campaign URL options here. I'm not gonna go through that in this video. And then you can also create dynamic search ads. So I have tutorials on my channel about how to create dynamic search ads. And the way they work is you would actually put a URL from your website or a product category from your website and Google ads will automatically target keywords based on that URL. So next as we come down is gonna be targeting and audiences. So to keep this really simple, you wanna set your location targeting, the areas that you serve, you wanna set your language targeting, the languages that your customers speak, and then audiences. You can actually add audiences to your campaign. So if you have a remarketing audience, for example, you can come in here to browse. I can come to remarketing and similar audiences, go to website visitors, and I can say anybody who's been to my website over the last 540 days, I can potentially bid higher on those people. If someone's already shown some level of interest in my website, my products, and my services, then I can bid higher to make sure that people are seeing my advertisements. So we'll click here, we'll add all users 540 days. You can also add other audiences in here, so you can do an in-market audience. So I can find an in-market audience related to farmhouse decor or just home decor in general, and then bid higher on people who are more likely to buy home decorations. So that's how you can incorporate audiences in your campaign. So for this, I'm just gonna say anybody who's been to my website pretty much ever, so we'll just say in the last 540 days, anybody who is on that remarketing list, I'm gonna bid slightly higher for those people because they've shown some level of interest in my website already. Budget the average amount you wanna spend per day. What they always recommend is for the month, you won't pay more than your daily budget times the average number of days in a month. So essentially just make that average number of days 30. So if I'm spending $10 per day, then over the course of a month, I'm probably gonna spend $300. If I have a $20 daily budget, then over the course of a month, I'm probably gonna spend $600. So just take your daily budget, multiply it by 30, or take your monthly budget, if it's $1,000, and divide it by 30, and then use that as your daily budget. Bidding, what I would recommend doing is bidding for conversions. So you obviously need conversion tracking in order to bid for conversions. So I'm gonna be focused on conversions, and I'm gonna set a target cost per action of $5. So this means that I want every outbound click to cost me $5 or less over the course of my campaign. Ultimately, what you want your target CPA to be is less than the average value of each conversion for your business. So if a conversion for your business is, let's say, worth $10, you don't want your target CPA to be $20. That means you're spending $20 to drive a $10 conversion back to your business. So you don't want to spend $20 to drive $10 in revenue. But what you ultimately want to do is get this target CPA as low as possible over the course of your campaign. So for this, I'm going to set it at $5. And what I would like to do is get it as low as possible. So we're going to be focused on conversions and we're setting a target cost per action of $5. Now the other option here, if we select a bid strategy directly, we can use one of the bid strategies from this drop down list. So truthfully, what I do is I usually start with a manual CPC, help increase my conversions with enhanced CPC and optimize for conversions. And that allows me to set my own bids. So it's really up to you what type of bidding strategy you wanna use. When I'm creating a brand new campaign, I will use manual CPC and help increase conversions with enhanced CPC and optimize for conversions. You can also test using target CPA. So target CPA is where you're focused on conversions. You set a $5 target CPA and you don't have to worry about setting your own bids. Google ads will automatically set your bids. 
So as someone who prefers to have a little bit more control, I'm gonna go with manual CPC for this example, help increase conversions with enhanced CPC and optimize for conversions. And I'm gonna start my bids as low as possible because I can always increase them over time. So if we click on show more settings here, you can set the conversion you're actually optimizing for, you can set your ad schedule, and you can set your ad rotation. So ad schedule, ad rotation, I usually just leave as default. For conversions, I'm gonna click here, I'm gonna choose the conversion action for my campaign. So we're gonna select outbound clicks. So that's the goal that I wanna drive for this campaign. We're gonna click on save, and now we have our conversion action set as outbound clicks. Next is gonna be ad extensions. So ad extensions allow you to add additional information to your Google advertisements. So with ad extensions, you can put additional information in your advertisements. You can see if I click on site links here, I can add additional links to my advertisements. So instead of adding these right now, what I wanna do is show you some example, examples of ad extensions. So if I come to Google, I search social media software. You can see right here at the bottom, loomly.com. So at the very bottom, you can see they have types, solo, pro, small team. So this right here is a structured snippet. So it allows you to add additional types, additional features. So here's another example of a structured snippet. You can see features, colon, and there's some different features down here for Squarespace social tools. Now they have pricing down here as well. So base is $25 a month, $300 total a year. If I click on more, so these are their price extensions. So now I know how much it's gonna cost me to use loomly.com as my social media software. Right here, features, pricing, and tutorial, those are site link extensions. So if you come back over to Google Ads and you're creating your search campaign, you can add additional links to your ad. So I can come in here and I can say, okay, I wanna add a link to dining room furniture. I wanna add a link to farmhouse furniture. So ultimately what you wanna do is set site link extensions at the campaign level that are gonna be good for the overall view of your campaign. So for example, farmhouse goals shop, that would be good to set at the campaign level. Now, if I'm creating an ad group based on dining room furniture, dining tables, then this would be a good site link extension for that ad group. So you can add different extensions to the site, the campaign level and the ad group level. So that's what you wanna do. The different ad extensions you can incorporate. So there's call out extensions. This just allows you to add additional information. So you can put some promotions in there or some selling points for your products and services. Call extensions, if you receive phone calls, you can add a phone number to your advertisement. So there's structured snippets. So with that, you can set types, amenities, features. So there's a lot of options in there to give just additional information about your business. Mobile app extension, so pretty self-explanatory. You can allow people to download and use your mobile app. Lead form extension, so you can actually incorporate a lead form on your advertisement so people can quickly fill out their information and send it to you. Message extensions allows people to send text messages directly to you, which you can receive as an email or a text message. Promotion extension, if you're running a Black Friday sale, an Easter sale, whatever it is, you can set that promotion in your advertisements. Price extensions I just showed you, so you can, set, if you have set prices for your products or services, you can add those here. And then location extensions are gonna use your Google My Business account. So if you have a physical store location, then you can add that to your advertisement as well. And it will show up on your Google Maps listing. So I'm not gonna add these for this example. I do have an ad extensions tutorial. I'll link it in the video description. So we're gonna click on save and continue here and continue moving forward. So now the main thing here, and this is the biggest takeaway from this video, is setting up your ad groups comes down to organization. So if I'm targeting keywords related to farmhouse bedding, what I don't wanna do is create one ad group for farmhouse bedding sets, farmhouse baby bedding sets, farmhouse blankets, farmhouse comforters. So essentially what I would wanna do is set up a different ad group for all of these different categories. So if I'm targeting farmhouse baby bedding, farmhouse crib bedding, so what I'll do is I'll come over here to my ad group and I would set it as farmhouse crib bedding. We can set a default bid. So since I have manual CPC, I'm gonna set my bids very low. We'll just do 25 cents per now. I can always decrease or increase these bids. You're gonna get some daily estimates over here. So there's already keywords showing in here. I'm gonna get rid of all these keywords. We're gonna select them and remove. And then over here under keyword ideas, you can enter farmhouse crib bedding, hit enter, and it will come up with some ideas. So as you can see, the ideas really aren't that great. Farmhouse bedding set, a little bit too broad, but if we scroll down, you might be able to find some ideas. Farm baby bedding. If you wanna find more keywords that you can target, 
go over to tools and settings under planning go to the keyword planner and you can do some keyword research i've just uploaded a video for how to use the keyword planner to create google ads campaigns so i'd recommend checking that out if you're looking for more about keyword research i have a lot of videos on my channel for that so for this my ad group is farmhouse crib bedding so what i'm going to be doing is targeting the phrase match keyword so if you're not familiar with keyword match types I would just say target phrase match keywords. It's gonna allow you to target people who are searching this keyword. And if someone types in farm baby bedding for under $10, we'll still reach that person. So it allows us to target people without being too broad and without being too exact. So we're gonna make sure that when people are typing in these keywords, then we're gonna, they're gonna see our advertisements. We're not gonna be too broad where the keywords that people are typing in are completely irrelevant to our advertisements. So we're gonna do farm baby bedding. We'll do farmhouse baby bedding, farmhouse crib bedding, and we'll do farmhouse nursery bedding. Okay, so we're gonna start with these keywords. So this is our ad group. We only have four total keywords in here. I would recommend 10 keywords or less in your ad groups. Just keep them very group by theme and as organized as possible. So now we would create this ad group. So we're gonna click on save and continue. Okay, so what we wanna do next is set up the ads for our ad group. So we wanna create more than one ad group, for, but for right now we're gonna create this ad group and we wanna create ads. So we, they recommend you create at least three ads that closely relate to your, the theme of your keywords. I would recommend it create at least two advertisements. So we wanna start with the final URL here. So what we're gonna do is come in here, we're gonna copy link address, and we're just gonna send people directly to that landing page on our website where we have farmhouse crib bedding, nursery bedding, and baby bedding for sale. So if we come in here to headline one, headline two, headline three, you just wanna make sure that you're targeting exactly what people are looking for. So if I come in, we'll just do for headline one, farmhouse baby bedding, and you can see how much you can fit, so we can't fit that, we'll just do farmhouse baby bedding. Headline two, we'll use for our brand name, so we'll just do farmhouse goals, and headline three, what we'll do is best rustic crib bedding sets, okay? So we have our three headlines filled out. You can set a display path here. So what I can do is farmhousegoals.com and we can just do crib, bedding, baby bedding, whatever you wanna do, just so people know what type of page they're gonna be going to. It does not need to match your exact URL. Next, I'm gonna fill out these two description lines. Okay, so I have top rated farmhouse crib bedding sets for your rustic nursery, find crib quilts and sheets. Description two, best farm style baby bedding sets, quilts, farmhouse baby blankets, rustic sheets, and more. So you want them to be a little bit different. If we come over here, a lot of times both description lines aren't shown. So for some of these, you might see two description lines, but for a lot of them, it's just gonna show one description line, and then it's gonna pull in a lot of information from the ad extensions. So this is gonna be our ad group. We have our text ad created. So what we can do is do done and create next ad. So what we would wanna do is set up a second advertisement. You wanna use different headlines. So we can do farm crib bedding, for sale headline two i'll do brand name and what we'll do for headline three is top rated farmhouse baby sets okay that'll work so we have crib bedding here we can always change our display path to baby bedding essentially what you want to do is use some different headlines different description lines maybe i'll take my description from line one put it in line two and create a brand new description line one Okay, so we have a different description line one here. We have our description line two set, so we can do done and create next ad. So for right now, that's good. If we come over here, it's gonna tell us to create a responsive search ad. So we'll create a responsive search ad. So what you wanna do is create some really unique headlines here. So I'm gonna fill out some of these different headlines. Okay, so if we're good right now, we have our final URL set. Once we have check marks here for add more headlines, make our headlines more unique. So you want four check marks here. It's only giving us good. So what I could do is add more headlines, but this is a good amount of headlines. A responsive search ad is gonna continue to change and serve different versions over time. And what Google Ads is gonna do is serve the top performing ad. So if we keep scrolling down, we have our four description lines. So we can click on save and continue. And now we're ready to launch our campaign. So it's gonna say, congratulations, your campaign is ready. So what we're gonna do is click to continue to our campaign. Okay, so it's gonna open us up right into our ad groups. So what you would wanna do next is start creating more ad groups. So what you would do is come in here to set up an ad group and you can go one ad group at a time. This is where using Google Ads Editor can come in. So that's a software that's gonna allow you to make bulk changes to your campaign much easier. But what I would do for ad group number two is just continue on the path. 
So let's say we want to target farmhouse blankets, farmhouse throw blankets. So we would target this page here. So we're going to create our next ad group and we'll do farmhouse blankets. So we'll set our default bid at 25 cents, start doing some keywords. Just make sure you're using these phrase match keywords. It's the easiest way to make sure you're targeting your ads without too much expansion and without being too exact. So you do get plenty of search volume and everything is going to be relevant as well. So we'll target farmhouse blankets. We'll do farmhouse throw blankets and we'll do farm style blankets and we'll do farm blankets. So we'll target a few keywords here. So we have our keyword set, we have our bid set, we have our new ad group. So we can save and continue and then go through the process of creating our advertisements again. So what you want to do is make sure you're updating your final URL first. So we'll copy the link address for this page. Come over here, change our final URL. So we'll copy and paste it in here. We're sending people to the farmhouse blankets page. Headline one, we'll do farmhouse throw blankets, farmhouse goals, and we'll do best it best rustic throw blankets. Okay. Change our path. We'll just do blankets. Set our description lines. Okay, we have our description line set. So now we can do done and create next ad you can set up your ad extensions here to the campaign you can set them up to the ad group level but we'll just do done and create next ad and then just come down here and do save and continue for now okay so it's that simple we have our new ad group set up now there's really no limit to the amount of ad groups you can put in a campaign if i were just targeting farmhouse bedding i would create a separate ad group for each individual page so i like to group my ad groups based on the landing pages where i'm sending traffic and based on the keywords that i'm targeting so if we come in here to farmhouse crib bedding and we're looking at our keywords, you can see baby bedding, baby bedding sets, crib bedding, nursery bedding. So we're targeting all these different keywords here. So what you want to do is make sure that your ads match up to those keywords, which they all do. And then when people do click through to your landing page, there's, they're getting a seamless experience. So someone goes from searching for baby bedding, they see an advertisement for farmhouse baby bedding, they click on your advertisement, they end up going to this page where there's just a lot of different farmhouse baby bedding for sale. So people can easily browse all of these products and hopefully purchase something. So that's ultimately the goal of Google ads. And the reason you want to set up conversion tracking is for me, if someone does click on learn more, it sends them directly to Amazon. And that counts as an outbound click for me, which counts as a conversion, which would tie back into my Google ads campaign. And then as we start getting conversions in our different ad groups for our campaign, we can start driving better results, more revenue for our business. And it's really that simple to create a Google ads campaign. Ultimately, your goal is to set up your ad groups and make sure they are as relevant and as organized as possible to what's on your website. You want to make sure that you're targeting these phrase match keywords, because if we come into our ad group, we're targeting these keywords and they're all phrase match keywords. Then only when people type in this phrase, will they see our advertisements. If they're looking up rustic blankets or if they're looking up country blankets, or if they're just looking up throw blankets for sale, because we have these in quotes, it's a phrase match keyword, then it won't show our advertisement. But if someone's searching farmhouse blankets for sale, if someone's searching top rated farmhouse blankets, farmhouse blankets in the color blue, they're going to see our advertisements. They can click on them. They can eventually visit our landing pages and hopefully purchase something. So that's your goal with creating Google ads campaigns. Again, this is a shortened version of this tutorial. If you're looking for the longer version, you want to make sure you check out this video. If you've already watched this video, then the video I just created is probably not worthwhile for you. But this is how you create Google Ads campaigns. And ultimately, what you want to do is start driving more and more conversions so that you can come into your campaign. You can go to the settings for your campaign and you can adjust your budget upwards if you need to or down or pause your campaign altogether if you're not seeing the results. You're only going to get charged when someone actually clicks on your advertisement. And you can see here we're just running on the Google Search Network and Google Search Partners. Conversions, we're optimizing for outbound clicks. And last but not least is bidding. So you can check out our video for bidding strategy, but usually what I'll do is I'll start my campaign with manual CPC, help increase conversions with enhanced CPC and optimize for conversions, set my bids very, very low. And then over time, as you're driving more and more conversions, you can change your bid strategy and set it to the target CPA bid strategy and set a target CPA at or lower than what you're currently driving conversions for. So if I drive 15 conversions and let's say my cost per conversion is $5.10, let's say my cost per conversion is $5.10, I would come in here to target CPA, I would set it at $5 and click on save. 
And once Google Ads has enough data about your campaign, what they're gonna start doing is just bidding automatically and they're gonna set your bids very low based on your target TPA or very high based on your target TPA and overall competition. And then you can start driving more and more conversions back to your website, back to your business, and ultimately, hopefully use your budget to increase your business revenue. If you have any questions about this, please leave them in the comment section. Thanks for watching my video today and make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel.